One of the things I absolutely love about the Nintendo Switch is the fact with its portable kind of design and whatnot, you can take it and get console quality games just about anywhere, even if I am just playing Uno, go ahead, crack your jokes. I love playing Uno. It brings back memories of me and my grandma. I love that game. But one of the things that sucks about traveling with the Nintendo Switch is the dock. This thing is massive, and it's one of those that it's kind of inconvenient to travel with unless you've got a lot of space to be able to take and store that. Well, that's where the guys over at Accelerate Gaming handed me this at the Midwest Gaming Classic 2024 in Milwaukee. This is a portable switch dock. Pretty stinking cool looking if you ask me. So what we're gonna do, as you can tell, we've already got it out of the box. I'm gonna show you the unboxing here. We're gonna hook it up, we're gonna test it out, and we're gonna see how it works. Now, a couple of things that I can't show you here, but I can verify in talking to our good friend, Jesse, AKA Jester Pease. You guys might know him as the Marseille guy. Jesse has confirmed that this does work with the Steam Deck, so good to know about that. So let's go ahead, give you a closer look, compare the size, and a whole lot more. So here's basically what I got handed at the show. This is the Accelerate Gaming uh, Portable Switch Dock, and just a really small, compact box. I do apologize for the dirt on my hands and thumbnails. I was doing a brake job on my wife's car recently, and well, it's still dirty. So it does come with a uh, user's manual in here and it actually shows ports that this unit doesn't actually have. So shows mini uh, DP, does not have a display port or mini display port. It just has the HDMI, no VGA on it, no ethernet. So in a way I kind of wish that they would kind of fine tune what they're including with the dock itself for a manual. Um, so not a whole lot here in the manual to go through. Here is the dock itself, very small and compact. I mean, when I say it fits in the palm of your hands, it fits in the palm of your hands. Now looking here, you do have USB 3.0, HDMI output, USB-C for power. Now obviously this does not come with a power supply for that. Stick with the OEM Nintendo one. Um, a lot of people have been concerned over the years about third-party docks damaging their Nintendo Switch. This is PD compliant. Um, I don't remember if they told me if it was PD 2.0 or 3.0, uh, but it is compliant with that. Main thing, you gotta use the stock OEM Nintendo power supply. If you do that, you should be okay. Um, there's really not a whole lot more to this, but one thing I did wanna show you is, so here is my original Nintendo Switch dock, and when I say original, this is from my launch day 2017 Nintendo Switch, and yes, it does have an extreme rate face on it, which you can check and see how I did that right up there. Um, but size-wise, compare that to that. It is dramatic how much smaller this is than this. And really, for the most part, so yes, you do have two USB ports there, and then another USB port here. So you are sacrificing USB ports on this but you're gaining so much more important. Like this is smaller than that part of the stock OEM dock. Now, that's pretty remarkable to me. To get this plugged in, super easy to do. Now, like I mentioned, I do have my, my launch day Nintendo Switch right here. All that you do is you just connect that right there, connect your HDMI cable here, connect your power supply, and you're ready to play. Now, same thing. and. You know, this is kind of obvious for the obvious sake, but just because I know someone would ask, what about the Switch OLED? Here's my Super Mario Edition Switch OLED. Same thing, just plugs into here, and then this connects to your power supply and your HDMI port. Now, in addition to working with the Switch, this will also work with some Android phones, and specifically, I will tell you, it does work with Samsung DeX. And what that means, you can use this to connect to a TV, like in a hotel or something along those lines, and have kind of a desktop experience through your phone or your tablet. It's really, really neat. I'll show you what it looks like here in just a minute. But speaking of which, I mean, there's not much to it. Let's hook it up, let's see how it looks, let's see how it plays, let's see if there's any lag latency or just, uh, delay through this, and let's 
let's just check it out. So we have our Nintendo Switch OLED hooked up here. I'm not going to bounce back and forth between the Switch, Switch OLED, my other Switch OLED. It's going to look the same because you're just using the you know, USB-C output from the Switch to connect to your TV. I think this looks pretty good. Um, we are capturing through a Bahar Bros Prodigy capture device, so uh, good to know there. Uh, we are going to test out just a few games um, and then kind of go through some of the questions that I asked the guys at the show as well. Uh, one of the games I always test, Street Fighter 2, so we're going to go and pull that up real quick. And for those who haven't seen me do these sort of tests in the past, one of the reasons... I do Street Fighter, I'm familiar with the moves, and to me, I can feel the lag, the delay, the latency in this versus some other games, I just can't. And specifically, just being able to pull off all of Ryu's moves. Wow, and Fate Long's kicking my butt. The one thing I've not been able to pull off yet is the Dragon Uppercut. Um, that was with the analog stick. We'll try the D-pad here, and I'm using a Nintendo Switch Pro controller just so I kind of have an idea of the controller being used. All right, so I'm able to pull off everything. Um, color reproduction, I think, looks pretty good here. Now, I am using my Samsung gaming monitor uh, to play through right now. Oh, he got me in the taint. Got you! Nice two-hit combo. To wrap up Fei Long there, so that was pretty good. Let's go to the Iron Collection, because this is a great set of games here, too. Now, I did ask the guys uh, at the show if they were looking to offer any kind of, like, anti-bricking sort of warranty or anything along those lines. They hadn't thought of it. Um, it's something they're going to look into, but at this point, they're a little bit non-committal towards it. Um, since it does have the proper, you know, PD sort of um, uh, certification and everything, you shouldn't need it. But that, to me, I kind of told them if it shouldn't need it, then it should be even easier for you to offer that, that brick-free warranty, if, if that made sense. Um, they didn't develop this. This is something where they found a manufacturer to partner with, said this is kind of what they wanted to create, and the manufacturer delivered the product to them. So um, I think of them less as, and this no slight intended here, less product developers, more marketers that they found something that they thought would be a good solution for here in the States. Well, that didn't take very long. Part of it was I was hitting A and B to shoot, and it's actually X. So there's that. Wow, I suck at this. So we're going to shoot that dude first, I think, and get him out of the way. Wow, kamikazes. Those guys suck. So, yeah, I suck at that game. So now we're diving into the Kawabunga collection, and uh, Turtles in Time, again, much better than Hyperstone Heist. I'm just going to throw that out there. That's for our buddy Jay over at Square Pegs. Make sure you check him out. You know what? We will play some Hyperstone Heist just for Jay. Jay, J-J-Jay, Jay. See, even just that, the voice doesn't even sound as good. What happened to the Big Apple? 3 a.m. Oh, wait, that's right. This is the inferior game. Yeah, again, everything is playing exactly as it should now. One of the things that's fun about how I've got this hooked up right now is I'm actually playing this through the Unitech uh, four-game switcher. So this is one of four car uh, cartridges that's hooked up to the system right now. I never noticed it before, but the uh, sprites actually are smaller on this than on the Super Nintendo version. And that's not a slight against it. That's actually just an, an, an honest observation that I didn't notice that the sprite work is a little bit smaller. Yeah, I would say this is working quite well. And again, through the Unitech uh, cartridge adapter and whatnot, that perfect. I have no real complaints. Finally, we're going to finish off, at least the game side of things, we're going to finish off testing with Super Mario Brothers Wonder, which is just, I love this game. It is so good. It's-a-me, Mario. Let's-a-go. Wahoo! 
Now, I will say one of the things about this is the fact that uh, I do miss Charles Martinet, I will admit. I mean, the, the guy that they have doing the voice now, he's really solid. But he's not Charles Martinet. Yet again, you know, everything looking great. Sounding great, too. I mean, that's the other thing is the sound is good, too. Um, overall lag latency, pretty decent there. You know, can't really complain a ton about that. I think that this, this does a pretty solid job of what it's supposed to do. As I almost hit that dude. Ah, that's what I need to get you for, buddy. Okay, I'm going to get you. I will get you. And your little dog, too. And hopefully... Yep, there we go. We got that. Awesome. This game is just so stinking creative, you know? They've done such a great job with this. You know, I do know that, you know, there are other manufacturers who have similar sorts of devices um, through other platforms, whether we're talking about, like, Amazon or, or eBay or anything along those lines. Um, they're not unique in this, and that's one of the things that's, you know, a bit of a bummer with them not being a manufacturer as much as, you know, they found they found a manufacturer essentially to partner with. Lucky, just what I needed. Um, you know, I wish that they could offer a little bit more to, you know, what they have. Um, you know, also just simple things like they've, they've got to get their manual right, you know, make sure that they are providing the manual to the device the end user is actually using that's that's important um you know because if if i'm seeing something that says hey this includes a display port then you know what it kind of needs to include that display port and as as we saw there in the manual it it doesn't include a display port not even by the manual but as, as far as th that's what the manual said and you know clearly this does not have that that was a manual for a different device clearly and you know I, I i would love to see them come and do a revision so that you would actually get a manual specific for this unit um one final thing i'm going to show you here in a second is the fact that it actually does work with something i use almost every day um, and that is samsung dex and if you're not familiar with what that is basically it is a pseudo sort of desktop operating system from Samsung that you can use on their phones and tablets and uh, I've used it for a long time and the cool thing is the fact that it used to be that you would have to um, you would basically have to buy a Dex dock um, kind of like a switch dock where oh you booger um, for it to work with Dex I mean it was not overly complicated. It was just one of those things of like it would cost you, you know, eighty, a hundred bucks. And uh, we had one for my wife's Note Eight. I think we bought it for. That's how far back it goes. Um, but it's it's it'll be interesting to see if this actually. Oh, you suck! There you go. Take that, bird brain. Um, you know, if this actually does work with Samsung Dex. So let's go ahead. We're going to wrap this part up, and let's test that out real quick. All right, final thing to show you here. We do have Samsung Dex set up, and I hate to turn my back to you, but just want to show you I do have my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra connected there. I've got a keyboard here, and I have my Logitech trackball here. You can see the cursor moving around. So we're going to go, we'll just go Internet. We'll just check out my 3D printer site real quick in case you guys and gals out there have not seen it as of late. So here we have the site and some cool new products. So, of course, we've got the Nestoration Super Nintendo Region Free Mod Kits. Let's dive into the new releases. I'll show you the coolest new one that I have out. This guy here, this is a display stand for the Hyper Megatech Super Pocket, which I actually have the original prototype here. This guy was just a little bit too narrow here. That's the good version there. And what that allows you to do is to 
basically store your Hyper Mega Tech Super Pocket and then four different Evercade cartridges. And then we do have a couple of different color options. Now, one of the things I am going to probably work on this is doing a two-tone color. Like the system, you see the yellow and a blue. I'll probably do yellow here, blue for the lettering. Still testing that out. I don't have that finalized yet. You know, I can take a look at pictures on my camera, you know, such as... Um, you know, there's the pictures of the Hyper Megatech there, some of our YouTube short stuff there. Hey, look at that goofball, that guy right there. And uh, unfortunately, the audio is coming through my phone, not through here. But yes, that's Chris and I at the Midwest Gaming Classic. So yeah, it works as a DEX solution as well. And, and like I mentioned, Jesse Jester Pease also tested this with um, a Steam Deck. Work with that just fine. So it adds a lot of functionality to what it does. It's not just a switch dock, which is really, really neat. And Man, I love using Dex. I think this is a fantastic interface. So much better than a MacBook. Simple and brilliant, and it's inexpensive too. 20 bucks to get yourself a portable Nintendo Switch dock that quite frankly, like I say, it just works. Now, a couple minor nitpicks about it is the fact, like I mentioned, the manual definitely needs to be updated. And you can kind of tell that these guys are, like this is their first real project that they've worked on they need some help getting it off the ground. And we've tried to give them a little advice as far as like how to work content on their website and things that they should be aware of on this. Now, a few things that are not in place now, but we did suggest to them is some sort of an anti-brick warranty where if you use this with your system and it does brick your switch, they'll go ahead and take care of it for you under warranty. They don't have anything in place right now. They are considering adding it. Now, the beautiful thing is this is PD compliant, PD 2.0 or 3.0. I don't remember which they said off the top of the head. And unfortunately, it's one of the things it'd be nice to have in the manual and it's just not. Again, it's one of those, they're, they're fine tuning their processes right now. But for 20 bucks, it works with my phone so I can use it with Samsung DeX to get that desktop experience. It works with my Switch and my Switch OLED. I can't complain a whole lot for 20 bucks. Now, if you do want to pick one of these up, I will have a link down below in a pinned comment where you can go ahead and check out their website and pick one of these up for yourself. Now, if you do want to see some of the reviews we've done on other Nintendo Switch docks, I'll have those linked for you right up there. Check them out. We have reviewed so many docks for the Nintendo Switch.